and we're live. Hello, Louis. How are you? I'm really good, thanks, Aldo. How are you? I'm um, great, thank you. Spring is in the air. Summer's around the corner. Long weekend ahead. Any yes. plans? I am going to spend time with my family. Great. Maybe do a bit of swimming. Yes. Relax. Absolutely. I may join. And uh, what about you? Yeah, well, uh, spending some time with uh, with family on Friday and then uh, have a wedding action on uh, Saturday. So uh, it should be fun. Looking forward to it. It's one of my uh, friends from uh, Water Polo. I used to play Water Polo. One of them is getting married. Beautiful. Great. So uh, we're going to talk about soft skills today. Yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, you want to tell us a bit of uh, soft skills? So <laughs> let's start by by uh, defining what a soft skills. So hard skills are about doing a specific technical task. So like accounting, graphic design, something of that nature. Soft skills are more about the way you do them. So like your ability to be creative, to problem solve, to communicate, to work within a team. Um, so those kinds of skills. You know what? I've uh, always thought about soft skills in a way that is a part of a natural talent, if, uh, if you agree with me. And uh, they get tested, especially in moments of pressure. I realize that when it comes to working with a team and you have deadlines, lots of people start giving away, uh, becoming too emotional or frustrated. So I think it's a great talent of someone who has this, you know, ability to lead a, a team, especially during difficult situations. Yeah, so, well, I think certainly people are born with different uh, different skills, but something with like soft skills, you can definitely train and learn, like anything in life. Yeah. The more you train and the more you practice, the better you get. And in those uh, in those tough moments or moments of stress, then your your training and, and all the repetitive stuff you've done will kick in and really help. So I think it's really important, and we can move on to that actually, why it's important to develop them. So I think, you know, at school, schools can do a lot more to train kids on uh, on softer skills like communicating like uh, you know networking you know everyone has that little sick stomach in their feeling when they go to a networking event and they don't know anyone you know how they're gonna what they're gonna say what they're gonna speak um so i think all of that can be trained and learned and practiced for sure and then as uh, as automation and ai starts to reshape all these different industries and companies and and jobs and most jobs that people are going to be doing who are at school now haven't even been in, uh, invented yet, probably. And all the people throughout the, the workforce, I think soft skills are the one thing at the moment anyway that machines can't replace. And how do you train for, you know, to improve your soft skills? Uh, is uh, there any class that you need to attend to or is it just uh, life? No, I think there's a lot of, there's a lo- loads of training you can do from, you know, even like actor training. You know, you can go to like an actor training school and they teach you about how to construct construct sentences, oh, how really? to speak properly, you know, how to uh, how to cope with uh, being in front of lots of people on a stage, presentation skills. You know, you find like Americans are always very good at public speaking and presenting and storytelling, you know, all of these things that I can I think can be a trained uh, trained as much as learning about the new accounting rules and regulations, you know, so people can learn to like dial up, dial down these skills. So I think it's really important and people need to to spend and invest time in themselves because a lot a lot of people, I agree. you know, r- wait for or rely on their companies to provide training courses and uh, education. But I think nowadays you really need to make an investment in yourself and seek out these things. And there's all these online learning platforms that we both both use, yep. Coursera and, and these various, they call them EdTech, Education Technology Platforms. Loads of free courses, loads of paid courses. So you need to be doing that. And, you know, I have uh, I think that uh, after all these years and have attended many networking events, I still have that, uh, you know, little fear um, of walking in this room with uh, lots of people that I've never met. And I think you have to, somehow find a way to overcome that that fear and um and uh interact as much as possible but not everyone is keen to do so uh there's a there are many people out there who just uh, don't feel in their comfort zone and what would you tell them and how so, would they overcome this so there's this a fear? great guy i follow on instagram and i'm listening to his audio book called david goggins all right yes, um, I've heard of him. really really great inspirational guy and he talks about uh callousing your mind what does it mean? So, so when you're at the gym, you know you have something you drink. You're doing pull-ups, yes. and your hands have all of these sores and calluses and stuff. 
and, and your hands are weak because you don't use them to pull up. But the more pull ups you do, you know, these, these sores become hard and they become tough. And then you can, you can do like a million pull ups. So callousing your mind is just as important. So callousing your mind means you're going through all of these like difficult moments. Either you win or you learn and all these learning experiences makes your mind harder and stronger. And so that's the callousing your mind. And so, you know, everyone feels awkward in these kind of group settings when they don't know people. Yeah. But the more you practice, the more comfortable you get, the better you get. And so when you, when you, when you put yourself in these uncomfortable situations, that's really when you learn. And a lot of people, they say, well, I don't like it. I don't feel comfortable. And that stops them doing things. Yes. And I think ne- nowadays it's really important just to, to go through that and put yourself in these tough uh, spots. Very interesting. Actually, last night I went to a conference by, the, by a guy who's a, a film director and writer. So it's not my field of expertise. And I've, um, he presented four short films. And uh, it was really interesting. Um, lots of people obviously were from the field. They started asking questions during the Q&A session. And I had that fear of asking a question in a space in a, or in a context where I'm not, I'm not expert. So I've, um, I followed um, Goins' uh, <laughs> uh, tips and I just thought I had to ask. And uh, I did and I felt relieved after asking this question. Well, the other thing is, you know, it's really important to have a child's mind. You know, so children, Absolutely. children ask them, you know, the most silly questions, right? Why? Or why is the sky blue? You know, all of these silly questions. And as you get older, you know, you're always afraid to ask the simple questions. Yes. And so I think why it's, is that? it's probably a social fear of looking stupid or failure. You know, if you put your hand up in the middle of a, of a, of a talk and you ask, Oh, why is this, that, you know, a lot of people are just scared to ask. And so, I think it's important to have this like learner's mind, beginner's mind, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we're seeing in our recruitment processes. So, you know, all of these soft skills we agree are important. Yeah. There was also a LinkedIn survey recently and, and they said that 92% of talent professionals say they matter as much or more than hard skills uh, when they hire, yes. which is really interesting. And 80% say they're increasingly important to company success. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the classic quote is, you know, higher soft skills rather than technical skills, you know, more and more people are doing that. So we've been, we've been, uh, interested in all of our clients and how accurately they've been assessing soft skills because it's not so easy. Absolutely. You know, interviewing, it's almost like speed dating. You meet someone for an hour and you're assessing whether you want to spend most of your life sitting and living with this person, right? So we find a lot, there's, there's a bit of a gap between, the demand for them, and then companies' ability to actually assess them properly. And most firms that we work with don't have an accurate way to assess them. All right. That's what we find. So, and the ones that do, they're doing some interesting stuff, which uh, which the others can learn from. There's all the psychometrics, and they go through fashions, you know, in and out, and some people use them, some people don't. Sometimes they're a bit expensive. I think they're really interesting. They provide additional information for hiring managers to make hiring decisions. So I think they're really important. And of course, AI and technology are playing a part too. And we've tried, and there's gamification. So we've tried Knack, which is an Indian firm that that have smartphone games and you play the games and your knacks and personality traits pop out. There's a bunch of others. So I think as time goes on, they'll become more more fashionable. But how do you think accurate are the psychometric tools to assess, you know, to assess all these uh, this relevant soft skills? So, well, more and more accurate. So they rely on on, on, on big data sets and some of these uh, psychometrics. Uh, the companies have been going for a number of years and they're proven, they're validated, you know, they're, they're quality methods and they're reliable. And uh, look, not all these things are a hundred percent accurate. That's why they're they they're used as part of the decision making process, not the you know the the uh, the only thing. And what do you, what do you think is the correlation between uh, soft soft skills and uh, emotional intelligence? So emotional intelligence is 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 probably a soft skill. So mm-hmm. it's really appreciating how other people are feeling. And so I would I would classify it as a soft skill. And and actually they say now, I was reading a McKinsey, it was one of the McKinsey quarterly reports that says, you know, strategy of a business is important. But if you haven't got the right people with the right skills, your strategy might not matter. No, absolutely. And so um, it's all about the people at the end of the day. Definitely. Awesome. Great. Good chat. Very interesting.